Defiance Season 3, Episode 4, Dead Air. I was actually surprised by this episode because, you know, with the way the last episode ended, it's like, okay, there's obviously this mission now to destroy the Ark, and it happens in the beginning of the episode. It's super simple. It's like, it, it gets blown up. I thought the whole episode was going to be like, are they or aren't they going to do it because they're, it's obviously this huge standard within the city. It's the city of St. Louis. It's this art. You know, that's what they have for, you know, miles and miles around, especially, you know, this post-apocalyptic world they live in. This is just a staple of where they live. This is a symbol of defiance. And it gets destroyed really early on in this episode. And then the rest of the episode is just like other stuff. I was like, I was incredibly surprised by that. And I love the way they did it with uh, the opening because I, I haven't even paid attention, honestly, to the opening of the last couple episodes. But I definitely did in this one. And they obviously took, you know, a focus after it was destroyed to show the title screen. And I do remember mentioning this a couple times in the last season where if it took place during the day, it would, you know, the opening would be the arch during the day and the whole city would be daytime. Or if the episode started at night, it would be nighttime. And so from now on, no matter whether it's day or night, it's going to be destroyed until they decide to uh, rebuild the Ark, if they possibly can. I would assume they could, but I'm sure if that does happen, it won't happen, or it won't be finished until the end of the season where everything ends up getting resolved, or possibly getting worse, depending on this whole, you know, ship in the sky full of Omec, you know, situation that they are at some point going to be dealing with. But I really did enjoy this episode because not only did it bring back Rodinger, who I really loved as a character. I thought he was actually a really interesting character who had just a crazy story um, in the previous season. But we find out that he is just all sorts of messed up. Like, I mean, he was not exactly the most mentally stable person in the last season. But then we find out, like, he's just a straight-up horrible person. It wasn't just like he had some crappy moments and stuff and I was reminded of the episode when he had uh the bio man before who was um basically he had to sacrifice that bio man and it was like it was really kind of depressing because the bio man like didn't understand and stuff in the last season and I was reminded of that because he had the bio man in this episode and you know that was one of those moments where it was like he had to do that in order to save himself and I believe he was um with someone else then as well I, I believe um i'm pretty sure he was with amanda then um but he could have been with someone else and I, I honestly can't really remember but you know the two people he dealt with he was with one of them or he was just, it was just him and the bio man but it, it was just interesting it was like we got to see him they find this amazing place it's like they go down this elevator it's like freaking a million different levels it's like all right it's a simple barn when they walk in they find this door they get caught by the bio man and you know they're dressed up all, all weird and stuff and they're going down all these different floors it's like here's a floor all rollers just all trucks and stuff here's a floor all guns and then they get to the bottom and you know there's art pieces all over the place and they have like you know the little heart monitor thing which i was wondering what that was about anyway and there's someone playing pool and my first thought even though they show the preview like whenever any series does a flashback to someone who hasn't been in the show it's like oh here's obviously that person in the episode but i thought it was going to be a lot of people in this base and at some point there was or, you know i guess there were a couple of people locked up and then riding during the bio men but we find out he basically just went insane. Like, there's really no explanation to it there. Excuse me. There, he leaves the town. Um, he ends up in a group of people. They get attacked. And then after that, when they do survive, eventually he just snaps. And for whatever reason, he goes crazy. He locks up the people he hasn't already killed off. And he basically attaches himself to the singularity bomb, which we find out at the end of the episode. It's not just like a crater like when <laughs> when Nolan mentioned like a crater like he did mention it was an entire city that was a crater I figured like okay well the city's probably like really messed up or you know I would assume wiped out because he said crater and then it happened I didn't think it would be like a 100 foot deep just hole in the ground I thought it would be like you know it was kind of 
destroyed. It was like a wide bomb went off, and there's like a little crater because that's just where the city was, and it's just gone. It's just nothingness there, and you know we have we have this scene, and we have just everything that happened between Amanda um, and Reiniger in this episode. It was just insane to just see get revealed because it's like okay, he's this character. And we knew a bit about his past. We knew that he was, he was bi a bisexual character because he was actually attracted to Amanda's former husband before he died. I believe he's dead. And he was like, okay, well, that happened. And then he fell in love with Amanda. And we find out in this episode, you know, he says a line where it's like he mentions that he says the line like, he, like you're mine. And that's what Amanda's rapist said to her before she was raped. And so it triggers something to her, it kind of, it messes with her, and she knows that something weird is going on, and of course, you know, Nolan gets beaten up and put in this locker, who, uh, which kind of leads us to meeting possibly a new member of the cast, if he doesn't end up getting killed off, but he's a doctor, so he's, he'll at least be in the next episode. But Amanda kind of gets into the screening room, because she knows, she's, obviously she's not an idiot, she knows something weird's happening, so she gets her answers, and she finds the footage that basically was all of last season. Like, that was every scene she was uh, by herself or even with someone else. She was being filmed and she never found out. And I kind of love the fact that they had that in this episode where she actually found out what happened. You know, every time she was, you know, by herself, she only saw, like, one thing. But obviously, I'm sure, you know, you would instantly assume... If you have this one thing, you have tons of things, and obviously there are other names as well. So she saw that footage, and that got revealed to her finally. And honestly, I'd kind of forgotten about that, too. I was like, oh, I forgot he did that pretty much the entire season. And really, it was like the last couple episodes where it's like, well, he's okay now because he's kind of helping out the good guys. But, you know, plus a year on top of that, you know, from the last season... I kind of forgot that he did all those things, so it was cool to have that kind of all brought back, and then he has all these things in this little screening room, he has like a picture of Amanda's former husband, and um, the mask and the flashlight, and you know, he's like, oh, it's replicas and stuff, and I was, I was going back and forth, I'm like, okay, the first thing I thought when I saw it was, it was actually him, and I didn't think that with the line, I figured, and I was kind of, I was slightly distracted, so I didn't hear the way he said it either. But I figured, you know, it was menacing enough, especially because I knew what was happening in the scene. I was like, well, he definitely said it menacingly enough for her. But I was like, okay, I'm kind of going back and forth. Like, all right, I saw it. I instantly thought it was him. And then he mentions the stuff about, you know, I found the killer and, or I found your rapist and I killed him. And I, I believe that because as crazy as he is, I could see how he could freeze up because you know, like, oh, I was there, and you don't know me, but I've been following you, and all this stuff, it seemed fairly believable, because he's crazy, so it's almost like any form of the situation seemed believable, and then, of course, it's like, you know, just going forward with it, it's like, it's seeming less and less likely that you killed this person to get revenge for her, and that it was just you, because she was close to this guy that you fell in love with, and you ended up falling in love with her and it was just insane and I mean just the way things ended in this episode with Amanda's storyline it was just like you know she's shooting him and all she wants him to do is admit it and he doesn't and she actually killed him and I you know of course especially when Nolan comes in you think okay he's gonna be like hey if you do this the whole place is gonna blow up singularity bomb he's gonna get to explain it and that was it. Like, she shot him. And, you know, when he held his hand up and she shot him through the hand, I'm like, that had to hurt. And it was just like, that was the first one. Honestly, even more than him getting shot in the leg and stuff, that was the one that really got me. Because it was like, they focus on his hand just, like, up in the air. And it's like, he's about to get shot. And it just goes straight through his hand. And it kind of uh, sends him back a little bit because he wasn't expecting it. But, you know, she shoots him, like, four or five times. And then she, like, shoots him. Um, I believe in the neck or chest or something, because it wasn't in the head, but, you know, that takes him down, and they have to take off, and, you know, this amazing place that could have helped save Defiance, it gets completely destroyed, and one of the things I loved about that is, I, I can't be mad that it happened, because in anyone's, anyone's situation, it's understandable that they would react that way, it's like, as much as she does care about Defiance, 
I can see something like that overwhelming you. It's like you find out that this person, you know, it's one in the one in the same, and it's just like this insane moment, you know, mentally. So it was just a great scene for her character that I I really loved. And it was like it sucks that it happened because of course it destroys all their weapons and you know, all those trucks and everything they could have used. But at the same time, it's like I can't possibly be mad at her. Just like with Nolan, it was like you can't really be mad at someone for acting the way that she did and if anything i'm kind of okay with it because he ultimately deserved it you know he definitely deserved it for what he did um in addition to everything he did afterwards when he was in defiance like filming her and stuff like that so it was one of those weird moments like it sucks that that happened because of course they really needed especially after she was outed for um lying to everyone within the town for not having any of the weapons and you know uh the general i can't remember his name but you know that guy he comes in with the hologram like oh she lied to you and stuff so she's been outed and of course i'm sure they won't tell that story like oh we found this amazing base and then you know, all the, you know we blew up the place um but it was just an amazing part of the episode i really love that storyline for her character um, it was ultimately, it was super messed up and I, it kind of sucked that it happened, that she got like this crazy reveal and it was just, a guy was insane. He fell in love with someone and then he got obsessed. I don't want to say he fell in love with Amanda. He probably did when he ended up in defiance after that, but he was just obsessed with her at the time and that's uh, why he ended up raping her. And it was just crazy like it was just a crazy reveal to have that happen where he was this person like he was obviously a bad person um in the last season where it's like you know he's recording and stuff like that but it was just even then it was like oh he's obsessed with her and then we get the reveal and it's just way beyond voyeurism or just spying on someone which is already wrong enough but you know just miles and miles beyond so it was like it was just crazy to get him back in this one episode. And I actually did like his character. I thought he was a in, really interesting character in the last season. And he definitely ended up creating an interesting episode. It's probably my favorite episode so far for the season. But it was just crazy. Like, just a crazy reveal. And it was just well done. And I don't think anyone could hate Amanda for what she did and the way she acted. I do wish that they could have got the weapons, but... That would have been too easy anyway, and it's TV, so everything has to be, you know, no, it's never just, we need this, we got this, so it's television, and I, I'm i sure they'll find some weapons or something crazy is going to happen anyway, but I love that story, it was my favorite part of the episode, just the reveals and, you know, how they were going to get out and kind of the mini storyline that kind of got put in with that, which was both Arissa and Nolan, um, suddenly being affected by sort of the brainstem thing that was keeping them both alive inside of the uh space pod so who knows what's happening with them i mean you know they each get affected at different points you know nolan gets affected and he's almost get to he's almost taken out by the bio man unfortunately he's saved by the doctor oh and he like throws the chains around his leg which i don't think made much sense because it seemed like he just threw it and they wrapped around his legs and was just suddenly all tied up but it was, either way, it was still a good moment. It was like, you know, he's really affected. And that was after Arissa was affected with like a minor headache. And then he had a longer version. And then at the end of the episode, they're both like just almost dead. They're they're basically dying by the end of this episode. And, you know, Nolan's sort of being taken care of by the doctor. He doesn't exactly know what, you know, is causing it. So he's not 100% okay. But Arissa is just left to die. I mean, that was just like, you know, she's there shaking and stuff on the ground. She's like, just help me. And, you know, it was just like, it was such a bad idea for no one to leave the two of them together. And it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. I figured, like, they're going to be arguing like crazy. But, you know, like, and I guess they were about to. They had, like, their moment when they were really up close. But... You know, it was just like she left Elrissa for dead. I, I wish I could think of her name. I just can't think of it at all right now. All I can think of is it starts with a B, and that's probably wrong. Um, but she just left her for dead. Like, she looks at her, and, you know, I thought maybe she'll help her and she'll care, but it's like, no, she just turns around and leaves her for dead. And I'm, of course, Elrissa's not going to die off, but it was still just like, dang, that's going to just escalate things. Like, she 
she's mad at Arissa, obviously, for killing Bobby. She has good reason. And then Arissa's going to be, you know, maybe not just this match. She probably won't carry that for, um, I think it's been like eight, nine months or six months, something like that. So she probably won't carry it for that long. But she's going to be mad that she was left for dead just in the snow, just by herself, left to die. So it was a great ending for the episode and it was like really harsh and just like she felt like this was her moment to kind of get her revenge uh for Bobby and I just thought it was a great moment I was like that is mess I was just like what she just left it in to die so I love the way that they ended the episode I'm excited for the next one even though I didn't get to see the full preview uh I'm still really excited for it. we have of course this stuff with um Stama and Daytac and what they're going to be doing and Stama is now uh she slept with the Omak guy and of course he totally survived the poison I figured um I kind of <laughs> I kind of thought he was dying when they were having sex and when he was like ah and screaming and stuff but that does happen um so he of course ends up surviving and she just ends up sleeping with him uh for the third time after uh they end up having breakfast uh after he makes her pancakes and stuff so I don't know how that's going to really play out with him surviving now. And, of course, he mentions, you know, they don't know, like, his physiology and stuff like that. And that's how he likes it. So, he survives. She's not going to poison him again. He mentions that he doesn't want to die and she doesn't want him dead. So, they should be on the same page. So, I'm sure she's going to come up with one of her um, very infamous plans. And they're going to end up working together. She's probably going to turn on day tech for you know again and try to save her son if she possibly can maybe that you know they'll go through with some of these missions um and i don't know how things are going to play out with her reporting back like i you know i couldn't kill him off we tried to poison him but we don't know his physiology so he he dies um so i'm not sure how that's going to work out it's simply they failed a specific mission and I don't think they're gonna kill off a like either. I don't think that I personally I don't think they're killing off any more main characters because they already killed off two, you know, in the very beginning, and that was a huge shock. I mean, I mean it was just a huge shock in general. They could have killed off maybe if they killed off like you know okay the father the adult father character dies. All right, that can kind of happen, but they killed off the father and the daughter, and they you know just have the baby and then the son who's been kidnapped is just like you know that seems like it's you know too much so i don't think we're gonna lose any more characters i'm hoping i i'm like right now i know we're not gonna lose nolan or Arissa, but other characters still can seem um a bit expendable so i'm, I'm just not really sure at the moment i hope not because i do like all the characters whether they're good or bad except for the current villain i just don't like him right now um but I don't know how he's going to react because he seems to be very uh, forceful. It's kind of like it's black and white with him. Like he's either happy or he's not happy. It seems, that seems to pretty much be his only reaction. Like I like this news. I don't like this news and I'm super pissed off. So he'll kind of have to deal with it. But he might not deal with it in the nicest way. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. But I did enjoy their storyline where they had to really figure out what they were going to do and you know they blow up the arc in the beginning of the episode which like i said i was really surprised by that i figured the whole thing would be them kind of deciding but this episode was a million times cooler than that so i definitely loved it um i like the fact that the town is now going to be a little bit against amanda because now they know the secret that they don't have any weapons they are going to be defenseless they have uh the shields up now which was their big issue before but I do think this one's a lot worse. Now they have no weapons in case, you know, once the shields do end up being taken down. So they're going to have to deal with all of that. They have to find new weapons. Now they have to stop and figure out how the heck are we going to save Nolan. Someone else is going to have to come into this situation and end up saving Arissa, which I just don't know who that could end up being. Like it might end up being the Omak daughter. Which I think would be fairly interesting if she was the one who ends up saving Arissa. But I figure it would have to be one of the main characters. Or someone else who could get introduced this season. And becomes at least seeming you know a bit important uh, for the series. But 
Either way, I really, really love this episode. Very, uh, very shocking, to say the least, I think. It was very shocking. You know, we lost the arc, or at least part of the arc, um, in this episode. Definitely no more radio. They may or may not fix that, like I said, by the end of the season, and we get a rebuilt arc. Um, you know, Stama has figured out she can't kill off the Omex, so now they're going to be working together to figure out a plan and take down the Votanist Collective, or Votan Collective. I guess both, same thing. Um, so that should be fairly interesting, especially Stama doing anything on her own. Always really interesting. Like her idea in general. Like, you know, I'll kill him during coitus. And then <laughs> they text like coitus. She's like, oh, it's a human thing. He's like, I know what, I know what coitus is. I love that scene because it was just really funny. It's like, you know, there's got to be like a million different ways. And she's like, nope, got to bang him to kill him. So I just thought that was a really funny thing. And this is like, they have the weirdest relationship. It's like the, I don't know. It's just weird. And then of course her line like, "I'll only be thinking of you" and stuff like that. Just really silly stuff with her. And it's always fun to watch. And she's so smart and dangerous. It's just insane to see. So I can't wait for this next episode to see how they kind of have to deal with things since the mission did fail. And of course, what's going to happen with both Nolan and Arissa, especially with Arissa being left alone. I'm very curious to see who's going to be the one that ends up coming into the episode to save her if, you know, she's just kind of left out. You know, is it going to be someone who does end up becoming important or is it going to be someone who we already know that comes in and decides, well, why not help her out? Because that might give me an end with Nolan who will help me do this and do that. And it could just end up being the doctor. She could just come across and be like, well, crap, now I have to save her. And that would be like, of course, that would be the line she'd give to because she's just silly like that. So no matter what happens, I'm really excited to see exactly why they're both being taken down by, you know, by this so long after. Like they've been out for days now, possibly weeks. And, you know, now all of a sudden they're getting like these crazy migraines that are literally just like killing them. So... I definitely want to know what the answer is for that and who ends up saving both of them, really, and exactly what it is that um, caused it and what's the cure, because this cure could, for whatever reason, be a cure for something else or be a weapon to something else, maybe. But I like the episode, of course. I want to know what you guys thought about this one, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And I definitely want to know what you guys thought about writing your coming back, um in this episode and just everything that happened with this character and i'm hoping that i have been saying it right and it's writing or not potting her um but i want to know what you guys thought about just his role in this episode and the big reveal like did you guys suspect that maybe um in the last season did you hope that he would be in this season a lot more um uh, which immediately i was kind of hoping that because when it started up and it's like oh where is he and he just left I was like, well, that kind of sucks. I was, I didn't think he'd be in it at all, honestly, because I was like, oh, well, maybe the actor just couldn't do it or didn't want to or something. I figured he just couldn't. So I didn't think he'd really be in it at all. And maybe that was the case, and that's why they had him in this one episode, because he couldn't be in the episode or the full season like he was last time. But I loved it. Like I said, it was just crazy. And... I don't know. Like, it was just an insane moment. We may or may not have a new cast member, depending on what they do with this doctor. But I definitely loved it. It was a great reveal. Um, very shocking. Very in intense moment for Amanda. Like, we never... Like, we, I mean, we've seen Amanda have some really serious moments, for sure. They're very rare, but this was, without a doubt, I think only one of two. The other one was with Stama, I believe, when she was about to kill her, but she decided not to. And she didn't, you know, she didn't do that this time. She actually killed the person despite, um, you know, a whole facility blowing up with her inside of it. So I love the moment. Very intense, very well written, very well acted as well. It was just really good. And the fact that he didn't say it, like he just wouldn't say it and was acting as if, you know, he didn't know what she was talking about. I actually really liked that as well. It was just like, it almost tortured her. Even though she was the one, you know, obviously shooting him. And it was like she was the one who was affected more than he was. So I just thought it was really well done. But like I said, I want to know what you guys thought about it. So please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.